Okay, uh, so welcome to this next uh, video in the Theory of Probability playlist. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the expected distance between um, two, uh, two standard normal distributions. So let me explain the setup of the problem. We have some abstract probability space here, and then we have a random variable, x, which is a function ascribing to every single outcome in here a real number. And the distribute the probability distribution uh, on this on this um, on this uh, set of real numbers is going to be standard normal. I uh, its PDF will be one over the square root of two pi e to the negative x squared over two. So it's going to be standard normally distributed. And of course, we know that the probability distribution on here, if this is going to be a random variable, it, me it means that it mirrors the probability distribution on this abstract probability space. Okay, uh, so the setup is this. Uh, for our problem. What we want to do is we want to uh, pick an outcome from here, Just add, uh, you just pick a random outcome from here, and then you pick another random outcome from there. So it can take on any real number effectively, you can get any two real numbers. Uh, so, and then what we're asking is uh, take um, the difference between those two values you get in uh, their real numbers, because of course you're going to pick two outcomes in here, so let's say uh, you pick S and S bar, but both of these will have uh, real numbers corresponding to them, so you can work out what are their real numbers. You can take X of S and X of S bar, which are real numbers, so that's uh, you just at, at, at the function X on those outcomes to get their real numbers over here, and then basically you can take the difference between them and then take the absolute value of that to get um, a, um, a distance in some sense. Okay, and then what we want to know is uh, what's the expected value of this? Uh, you're picking two random points, uh, of course there's a certain probability that you're going to get each of those points, uh, what's the expected value of this? And the way we, that's the problem we are basically going to attempt here. So if you think about it, um, the abstract probability space we're working with here, you can get absolutely any outcome. Uh, for, your first, for your first pick, for your first pick here, you can get absolutely every single outcome. So if you like, you've effectively got this entire probability space here, which I'll just draw as one line here, represented here. And then for your second outcome, you can also pick absolutely every outcome. So effectively, there's a massive great Cartesian product of this uh, probability space with itself, and those are all the two possibilities that you have here. So that's effectively what this is going to be. So if we call this a name, if we give this the name uh, omega, then this is effectively going to be omega cross omega. Uh, so it's going to be the set of all ordered pairs of elements in omega. And now what we're going to do is we're going to set up a joint random variable. So we're going to... Um, we're going to have two random variables effectively on here. We can again ascribe the random variable x, which will take, which if you think about this, this is all ordered pairs. It will just, it will ignore the second entry of the ordered pairs. So if we have like um, ordered pairs in this place, so we have s and s prime, let's say, uh, it will ignore the second entry and it will just look at the first entry and it will ascribe you the same real number uh, that it ascribed uh, to s back in here. Okay. And then we can also have another random variable y, which does exactly the same, but it just cares about uh, what that second entry is. So it will map um, what, okay, so let me just uh, write out what they're doing. x is going to take an ordered pair, s, s prime, let's say, and it's going to map it onto, uh, let me call this original mapping x bar. So x bar of s is what it's going to map it onto, and similarly y is going to take an ordered pair s s prime, and it's going to map it onto x bar of s prime, so what um, what this function up here would have mapped s prime onto. And basically both of these are going to be standard normally distributed, so y is going to be standard normally distributed, and uh, x is going to be standard normally distributed. And if we plot them as a joint random variable, then basically we have a great big um, plane like this. These are all the values that x can take on, and similarly you have all the values that y can take on, because uh, for any uh, fixed value of s, you will have a certain value of x, and then you can vary this second entry over every single possibility uh, in uh, the original probability space omega up here, and for that you'll get every possible real number down here. So uh, basically what it's going to correspond to is a 2 by 2 uh, plane here, so R2, where every, every number is a possibility basically. And uh, because they are independent, because uh, the um, 
the your first the first outcome that you pick doesn't affect the uh, second outcome you pick we know that the probability that x is equal to little uh, little x let's say where little x is a, a real number and y is equal to little y will just be equal to the probability that x is equal to little x times the probability that y is equal to little y that's just by um, by you know, by the setup of the problem, we know we 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 are saying that the second pick should not affect the first pick, and that means um, the mathematical way of writing that is we're going to insist that this is true. So you can't really derive that I'm insisting that that is true. That these two random variables are going to be independent. That they, that you know that when we pick them, the the first one you pick is independent of the second one, and the second one is independent of the first one, etc. Uh, so that gives us this, and that uh, that's the fancy way. Um, independent is just words. That's what I mean by independent. That is going to be true. Okay. So because the probability that x is equal to little x, uh, well, we know x is standard normally distributed. So the um, oh dear, sorry, this is all wrong because. Um, we are dealing with a continuous random variable, so this is this is what it will be for a um, discrete random variable. So instead, what we have to write is that the PDF of x and y, the joint PDF as a function of x and y, is the uh, marginal PDF of x as a function of x um, times the marginal PDF of y as a function of y. Okay. Oh, sorry, that should be a big y. Okay, so we know what the marginal PDFs are. Uh, the marginal PDF for the random variable big X as a function of little x. So if you give me a uh, real number, little x, and want to know what is the probability, um, well, what is the probability density that you get that little value x, uh, we know that that's going to be 1 over the square root of 2 pi e to the negative x squared over 2. And similarly, the marginal PDF for y is going to be um, equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi uh, e to the negative y squared over 2. Okay, So when we get the joint PDF, they're going to join together to give 1 over 2 pi e to the negative x squared plus y squared over 2. Okay, And if we actually plot that out, if we uh, think about plotting that as a function of r2, then what we're going to need to do is sort of put r2 on a slant like that and uh, plot the probability density function uh, on the z-axis up here. So let's say this is um, this axis is going to be the joint probability density function as a function of x and y. It's basically going to look like um, the normal distribution, but in three dimensions. So here is a cross-section of it through the centre, like that. Uh, and now, basically, it's going to do the same thing. So it's going to look like a mole here, effectively, like this in the other direction and it's going to do that all the way around so it's completely radially symmetric so like that etc okay uh, so that's uh, the PDF we are dealing with in this case okay so now the question is what we would like to know is what is the random firstly what we want to know what we're trying to calculate the, the thing we're actually trying to calculate is we're trying to calculate if you take away the value of x from the value of y so uh, each of these outcomes is ascribed to value of x and it's ascribed to value of y. We now want to construct a new random variable, which is x minus y. So to each of these outcomes, we're going to ascribe x minus y. And that's going to be a, a new random variable, basically. And indeed, what we could do is we could plot x minus y as a function of r2, because each one of these has got a uh, unique specification in terms of r2. So, um, well, potentially not unique, but it, we could indeed plot it as a function of r2. Uh, but uh, what we want to now do is construct this new random variable x minus y and see what how it's going to behave. Okay, um, 